Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. Three of the DS series have been completed. One remains, and we got a lot of upsets happening. Let's talk all about it. Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Jimmy. We got Jake coming to you from his home. Trevor from his home. Me from my home. BBD from Manhattan. Brought to you by SeatGeek. Use code John Boy Playoffs for 10% off at SeatGeek at the app or the website or however you want to get tickets. We got a four. We have four games to get, get, uh, get through here today. It's a big all day for baseball. And one of the games. Went 18 innings. So basically like five games. We're cron pod as always, Jake. So can you just take us through the first game of yesterday, which was Phillies Braves, which was an elimination game for the Braves. The seat geek burn. Let's get right to it. We are going to Philadelphia game. For the salt man, Charlie Morton, trying to save the brave season versus the king of Asgard. Thor, Noah Syndergaard, trying to take the Phillies to the promised land. The bottom second, Jay Wright's in the stand, and it is Marsh Madness. Three-run home run for the Phillies. Are you kidding me? But one, two, three, Arcea's. Solo shout for Arcia. The Braves aren't dead yet. JT Real Muto, the little league inside the park home run. Do you believe in October baseball? Missing person look for Acuna. Where are you, kid? Date my daughter. A little fortitude from the Braves to make it fortitude. But Trev's guy guy. Reeser with the RBI single. Real Muto. The infield dribbler and Hopper, he bloops one in. And just like that, it's seven, two Phillies. Harper hits another homer and Darno does too, but you Darno, it's not enough. The Phillies, Cindergard to Bilotti to Jimmy's Brad Hand, Alvarado, Eflin, and Sir Anthony Dominguez. The fighting Phils are going. To the NLCS, they win this game eight to three, and they take the series three games to one. Trev, oh, our first team advances. Trev, what you got? I'm happy, man. You know the Phillies are playing with tenacity. I think. I don't even know what that word means, but it seems like the right word for uh, this moment. Uh, And basically, they kind of got clicking. And I know it's funny because when we're talking about the middle of this game, when they kind of broke it open, and it's we go back and forth between homers win you games in the playoffs, and then you got all the guys on TV telling you that contact matters and you got to put the ball in play. And they've kind of done a little bit of both the Phillies here. Those three hits there, the Hoskins bloop, the Rio Muto infield bunt single, swinging bunt single, and then Harper kind of just like shooting one through the shift a little bit over there in the hole. I mean, they're doing everything right, and everything is kind of going the Phillies' way. Back-to-back short starts by the Braves starters and Strider, and then Morton gets hit with the comebacker. Um, that was interesting to me, man, because even though the Braves' bullpen was still – I think they were rested enough and they had enough guys to get through this game. I mean, the exposure that you get uh, with the bullpen – all, it ha- all you have to have is one guy kind of put some guys on base and then things can happen. You can add some insurance runs and it's kind of what happened. Philly gets hot. We're seeing these series, dude. We're seeing these series where the teams that had that five day layoff just offensively, it's, it's kind of become too much. I mean, the Braves were three runs, three runs, one run and six runs. And uh, they just never kind of, clicked fully offensively and we're and we're, we're starting to see that and now it's like do we go back and think about 
the new playoff system? And do we make changes to it? Because right now it doesn't seem like you have an advantage if you have the five-day layoff. That's a big storyline going right now. And I probably it's too early to tell. And you got to see it a couple seasons in a row. And a five-game set is just basically a crapshoot all the time. But basically. Doesn't help that the Braves had Strider on uh, coming off injury. The Morton has another another comeback. He had one last year where he broke broke his foot or hand. I forget what it was. It broke a bone. Leg. His yeah. leg. Yeah. And he kept pitching on it. So the Braves pitching is is hurt and hobbled and all that. And also had a terrible start in game one. But I mean, the Phillies got a lot of juice mojo. And I'm I'm very jealous of Phillies crowd. And we'll get to this on the next segment or whatever, the Padres crowd. And it just feels like um, awesome. Just, you know, freshness and like excitement and really like ringing and out all the moments and helping the teams go. I mean, and then you have Marsh, you know, the trade and it was kind of an odd trade. And then he's a hero for a game, the Homer, the big double. And those things are cool. It felt like playoff baseball. This this was a team. Yeah. Before we do the playoff format stuff, because let's see the rest of this year. Let's see the next couple of years or two. Let's give credit to the Phillies because, you know, you could talk about the hitting side of it because that's where the layoff's supposed to affect you. Right. You don't see that live pitching. And then you come back in uh, the Phillies. Remember, they almost blew this. Uh, they got swept by the Cubs. Remember how that was one of the Mets like losing rallying cries. This team got swept by the Cubs. They were losing a ton of baseball games. Thought these Brewers might catch them. No, Uh, they went into St. Louis. They got their work done there in two games. And then the Braves, Um, you know, Trev, the pitching, I I mean, they put up a nine spot and an eight spot. So that's where the layoff stuff. I mean, the, the Braves good bullpen in this game got touched up. So, yeah, I know, you know, Morton, you know, one of the biggest RPM curveballs in the game, Marsh gets them and you say, whoa, you know, that that felt like Philly has the good juice this year. Right. But then, you know, Jimmy's guy, Colin McHugh, he gives up a run. A.J. Minter gives up a couple. Even my guy, Reisel, I, you know, that's that's the guy I said, if I could have any one stuff uh, in a bullpen, I'd take him. And man, they feel like <laughs> and it's funny because we're going to get to the Padres. They kind of feel like the team that's supposed to be this year's October team. Like we've talked about them for two years about the high end pitching and the dudes in their lineup that it's like, get them in a playoff series and let's see it. It's just funny (laughs) because the Padres also have that juice and a goose attached to them. Um, But man, I mean, how many dudes in their lineup are going right now? Gene Segura with another multi-hit game. Marsh with two hits and a three-run homer. Uh, Real Muto, two hits. Harper, Hoskins, also two hits. Um, Schwarber with two walks. Like, their full lineup is going. And I think, you know, the fear factor has been the pitching, right? Like, we've got Syndergaard on a short leash in this game. Bilotti, let's be honest, not in a lot of doc- talking baseball people's books at this point. Uh, Brad Hand, Alvarado, Led Zeflin. You know, we we thought that was going to be this team's Achilles heel. And, you know, they outdid the Braves bullpen, the mighty Braves bullpen, uh, you know, one of the best bullpens in baseball. So kind of every aspect. And like Jimmy said, with the trade for Marsh and dude, I said this guy's name when he came up and want to see what it was. Bryson Stott uh, making plays out there and just a stabilizing force at such an important position. We've seen it in every series, um, how important that shortstop position is in the kid. I mean, he's becoming a little bit of a Philly legend himself. So, um, I mean, Phillies, man, the place is going nuts. I I love it. Yeah. I think the biggest thing for the Phillies in this series, that bottom part of the lineup producing, if you get those guys in your lineup producing, and then you kind of have, I mean, you have, like I said, like six dudes at the top there that can really just win you a ball game at any time. You don't even have to have all of them going. I mean, Schwarber never got going. You know, Hoskins had, you know, uh, a hit in this game and the big homer, but he didn't. He hasn't really got it going yet. But when you have guys setting the table for you, <clears throat> it just takes a two of your guys, a few of your guys, to do at the top of the lineup. So this is 
that's the the format or the formula for success in the playoffs, man. Just putting guys on base and seeing what happens. And when your bottom of your lineup can do that for you, it makes things a lot easier. You have a lot more scoring chances. You can cash in. We've seen in this playoffs a lot of tough um, box scores with runners in scoring position. You know, you're leaving them out there. But when you keep presenting yourself with those opportunities, I mean, that's the way you win ball games. And you're right. The bullpen has figured some things out. They pieced it together, put guys in the right positions. They kind of move things around. Um, and Marsh, I mean, that was kind of a, a backbreaker home run right there. If you get up three, nothing at the beginning of an elimination game and Syndergaard looked great, man. Like that's, that's a start that you needed from him. I know he goes three innings, but you have enough in the back to piece it together. And if you're the Braves, you just, you kept inching closer, inching closer, but traffic on the bases and some of those C nice singles and bloopers like fall and kind of everything was kind of breaking the Phillies way that they were making their own chances. But, you know, throughout these playoffs, they've had some innings where they've just placed the ball in the right spots and call it, the baseball gods, call it what you want to call it, but as A-Rod says, contact is king. No homers here, mm. which is not true. Mm. A little bit of a trade game, huh? Some of these uh, matchups. I mean, you got Syndergaard starting and pitching well and Marsh coming through, and then on the Brave side, Iglesias, Kenley, a lot, both a lot of angels, pops. a lot of angels in this series doing it uh, for different teams, huh? Yeah, I didn't put that together while I was watching it. But yeah, Ken Kenley That's was free boring. agent, but free agent, yeah, agent, but new, yeah. No, and hey, uh, the other thing is we go through this box scores, and you're going to hear this about BBD's Yanks coming up. Uh, four hits from the Braves, you know, Trev, I, I know we, we mock our guy rod, um, you know, the home run battle in this game, uh, was, was nose to nose, you know, in, including an inside the park one by real Mudo. Like you need more like that. That's the secret to that home run stat. Uh, cause guess what? If you hit two solo homers, but I hit a grand slam, that's going to favor me. Like, I hate to go analytics on you guys right now. Um, <laughs> the, 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 the Braves on, had. The Braves had four hits uh, in their elimination game. The Phillies had 13. Um, and yeah, man, that, you know, if I told you one team had McHugh, Minter, Iglesias, and Jansen coming out, that's, sorry, Dylan Lee, uh, your name power is not there right now, but you actually had the clean inning, so I'll give you love right here. If I told you you had those guys going against my Paisan, Bilotti, and Alvarado, Eflin, and Sir Anthony Dominguez, it, you know, coming into this series, you would have taken those Braves guys every day. But the dudes in their lineup, everyone is a tough out right now. I mean, Bohm, uh, you know, haven't mentioned him. He had another hit in this game. Castellanos had a great series. Harper hit 500 this series. He slugged with a one dot. Gene Harper's Segura, awesome. how, how's your 462? Marsh with the homer in this game. Literally everyone, you know, uh, whether... Yanks or Guardians or, or any of these teams, you have guys on on the team and in the lineup that currently aren't contributing because it's four games and it, it's tough to get everyone. They've got everyone, even Schwarbo, even though he didn't hit, he's got his on base percentage up to 333. And then on the other side, you go through the Braves, Young, Thick, Money, Mike. Uh, I mean, those guys are, the, you know, two of the dudes on that team. Their batting averages start in the zero. Um, you know, Dan's Bay did not have it this series that, yeah, I, I mean, when, when you look at it, it ends up looking simple. The, the Phillies got it done and the Braves didn't, there's no like, you know, sneaky comeback or, or massive air. Like they got beat. Yeah. I think if you go over the pitching and, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think the only good start from the Braves was Kyle, Wright. Freed struggled a little bit. We have Strider short start. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have Morton short start, and then on the, on the flip side, uh, you had two good starts from Wheeler, Wheeler and Nola. I know Ranger kind of had a tough one to start. Wheela, did I say Wheela? That was a little. That was a little sports talk, Trev. Oh no! Don't please don't put me in. That I like that. Just I'm waking up out here, but that means something too. It means something too when you can get your starters to go out there and, and have a few good starts there. 
Uh, I keep saying like exposure to the bullpen. And what I really mean by that is like when you keep replacing guys, it only takes one guy to blow up and to put a bunch of guys on base and things happen. Um, and the team that can avoid that. I mean, that's, we've seen that the bullpens have been paramount in these series too. Like we've seen a lot of, lot of innings from teams and their bullpens. And the Braves just did it, man. I don't know. Like the, the, do you think you talked about Rio Muto's Homer and Acuna not getting over there? That was in the third inning. Um, there was a solo homer by Atlanta there in the top half. So now it's three, one, you're like, okay, we're back in the game. And then real Moto hits that. If you keep them on third base and you get out of that inning, is it a different game? I don't know. It's a difficult ball for a Cooney to go get over there on. It's in left center. It's like, you have to, I guess you have to be anticipating that. Uh, but that was interesting to me. I mean, he wasn't anywhere close. He didn't even try to take a, a step look. over there. Yeah, it's more of a bad look than like he could have made anything happen. There was yeah, perfectly. I mean, maybe he holds him to a triple, but I mean, it's only one run. We're not blaming. You can't blame the series or or even the game or anything on that. I just think it's a bad look to not. It's those. It's those answering innings. Yeah, but you you know you 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 need to shut down inning. Yeah, you get within two. You want to shut down any because you score again the next one. Now it's three to two. It's just it's just different ball games, different feels to the at bats. The rest of the game, I'm not going to put that on Acuna because I agree with you, James. I don't know if he could have done anything differently there except go and try. I don't think he was going to affect the play, but yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know. I guess I guess you want Harris to go after that ball, but at the same time, you know that wall is tricky out there. It's got that weird angle. If it gets off of it, it's going to bounce and into. I no want him to go like after it. Good. Like, yeah. you know, it's the postseason you're looking and, and a big catch like that can I mean, it can change the whole confidence of everyone. So I, I don't mind him going after it. I think if Acuna is just following the play slightly, it's got a, a catcher running. He holds him. He was I mean, yeah, Harris had to field it, hell. right? Yeah, but didn't. I didn't see a, I tried. I watched like the main clip on Twitter a bunch. I didn't see like a slow-mo replay or like an ISO camera on. Uh, Cunha, but didn't Harris field it? He did. And I had to run after it. Yeah, <laughs> like get up and run after it. Like, come on! If Acuna's trailing the play, he's got to. He stops him at third. Yeah, that's just a weird it's, wall out there. I don't know. But again, know again, it's, again, it's, it's nothing but a bad look for Acuna. It's yeah. something you dive into when your team loses a series because you're mad about stuff and and momentum. Momentum's real, and we can't measure it. But I don't know. Let, let's say there's an alternate universe where Acuna does hustle over there. They make a relay throw and they get real Muto out at home. You know, what What does that do for the Braves energy? And what does it do to the energy in that Philly stadium that was going nuts? We'll never know. And it doesn't matter. And yeah, I mean, when we talk Braves this offseason, you know, Freddie Freeman was the guy, right? We're building monuments. He's the dude. He's, he's the like the leader of the clubhouse. If you're going to ask someone's questions, it's him. Um, you know, we kind of wondered was, was Ronnie going to be next? I mean, he's the, you know, probably most talented dude on that team. You know, he's still very young and, you know, there's a couple things in, in the past and not hustling snicker pulled him out and things like that. You know, they give, they give Austin Riley a massive extension. They give elder guys, massive extensions. Like who's, uh, you know, who's the, who's the alpha in that locker room? Cause it, Trev, correct me if I'm wrong. You know, there's a lot of alphas on that Philly team, but like, you know, it's Harper. Like, you know, if you if you're coming through the front door, you got to deal with them. And hey, again, does any of this stuff matter if if you get if Charlie Morton pitched eight shutout? No, but that's not what happened. And that's how you end up in these conversations. Baseball. Freaking bottom of the six is going to haunt Braves fans for a while. I know that wasn't the whole series, but. Just some really kind of lucky type hits and to put the game away four two, and then you give up three there on three balls with exit velocities what less than 80 miles per hour. Like that's, t- that's a tough pill to swallow. And you got your guys in there, Minter to Iglesias, and it just it's tough. And, and that's what A Rod just said it's baseball, baby. You know, they always say that. We always talk about the NL East being a dogfight. I think if we've learned anything, it's just Jake tweeted it. Just stay stay away from the fray. Last year, this year, don't get in that grind too early. 
tie yourself Hang out. It. I'm going to make a meme. I was telling Jimmy on BBD on waiting for the subway yesterday. Trev, you'll know this because you're a music video guy. Uh, Outcast Roses. Mm -hmm. uh, you have Speaker Box and the Love Below uh, fighting for the girl. Caroline, we'll yeah. call her. Mm -hmm. And uh, at, at the end of the music video, they're all brawling and Cat Williams comes in. Look left. Look right. This is your past. And then he leaves with the girl. That's what the Phillies did. Jake okay. memes. And the I don't speak a box. You lost me. Hello, below. Well, I saw it. I bought it. it was All right. Uh, are we going to preview? Like, the, we got to talk about the Padres coming up. So we'll just move on. Good job to the Phillies. The crowd was electric. I'm excited to see more of the crowd. Excited to see more of Harper. <coughs> Harper's got to Har shed. People got to stop hating this guy. Who hates him? I don't think anyone was really voted does. like the I, think I don't think anyone yeah. does anymore. But, you know, when yeah. he was younger, he was voted like the most hated player. It's like he's you know what? Who the hell was my voting auntie Reed does my auntie Reed doesn't like him because people tried to act like he was a young punk or whatever. He's everything a superstar player should be. Yeah, he's done nothing but play the game hard in the right Plays way. So hard career. had was on the cover of Sports Illustrated at 16 years old. Is one MVPs is awesome. He did the body issue very clearly wants to win? Unless you're a fan of his rival team, that's fine. Obviously, but any third party neutral, like how could you hate this guy? He is electric to watch. Yeah, he swings the shit out of that thing. It reminds me of you, Jake, a little bit. Ooh. Don't like him while you're playing against him. That's fair. Yeah, that's fine. 